Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about insulin administration and its complication lipohypertrophy. This will be an informative session regarding the best practices to prevent lipohypertrophy, which will be useful for the nurses. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. What do we mean by lipohypertrophy? Lipohypertrophy is an abnormal accumulation of fat underneath the surface of the skin. Here you can see the picture of the surface of skin and the lipohypertrophy is formed due to continuous administration of the insulin shots on the same site. Now let's look into the causes of lipohypertrophy. First cause is reuse of pen needles. In some studies, the more people reuse their needles, the more likely they were to develop the lipohypertrophy. When needles are used again and again for administering insulin, there are chances that the needles get either blunt or damaged. And hence reuse of such damaged pin needles can cause skin and tissue injuries. This together with frequent injections in same site can lead to lipohypertrophy. Next cause is improper site rotation. Why site rotation is important in insulin administration because this allows the time for the skin to heal. When site rotation is not proper, there are more chances for the insulin to be administered in the same site and this leads to lipohypertrophy. Next cause is administration of injection in the same site or favorite sites. Many a times, patients ask the nurse to administer the insulin on the same site because they do not have pain in the site and the reason is due to lipohypertrophy. Now, what will happen if we administer insulin on the fatty lump area or the lipohypertrophy site? When we administer insulin on the same site of lipohypertrophy, there is poor absorption of insulin. This may lead to poor glycemic control, either hyper or hypoglycemia, and sometimes the patient may need more insulin. Now, how do we prevent lipohypertrophy? First comes replacing the needles. When we administer insulin through an insulin syringe, we tend to use new syringe every time. But when using pen needles, nurses should make sure that the needles are changed as needed. Next is proper site rotation with help of a insulin site rotation grid. Next is palpate the site before administering the medication. If we identify any lumps on the site during palpation, do not administer injection on the site and make sure it is documented. Next comes documentation of the site where the injection is administered. Why documentation of the site is important and before discussing this, we have to know the steps of administering the insulin. The steps are select the site Rotate the site, administer the medication and document the site. Here comes the documentation of diabetic monitoring chart where there is insulin administration grid on the top of the chart with the numbers. As we discussed previously, first comes the selection of site. When we look at the chart, on the injection site column, insulin has been administered on right thigh number 1 at 8.10 am. So the next site for administration will be number 2 but which is not on the right thigh. The number 2 is located on left thigh and this we call it as site rotation. So after administering insulin on site 2 it has to be documented with the time and the place and this will be helpful for the next nurse to administer the insulin on the next site. By using the insulin administration grid on the documentation chart, we can very well select the site, rotate the site, 
administer the medication and document the site. Here comes the image of the grid which we will be having in our hand looking like the same as shown in the documentation chart. We can use this for selection of the site to administer injection insulin. What are the benefits of implementing such practice? This helps to avoid multiple same site pricking. It helps to improve error-free nursing compliance in handing and taking over of insulin sites. It helps to standardize appropriate site rotation practice during insulin administration. And it helps to have a nursing documentation of subcutaneous insulin rotation sites. And last but not least, it helps to prevent lipohypertrophy. This is all about the prevention of lipohypertrophy. If you find this video useful, please like it and please subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.